Brand new and updated inbox. According to reliable leaker Mark Gurman, Apple is planning a yep. system to update sealed iPhones inside their retail stores without ever taking them out of the box. Allegedly, these sealed boxes, this is so cool, will be placed on a proprietary pad-like device that will turn on the iPhone, install the latest updates, and turn it back off. People are, people are pointing out that New York has like four times the population of BC. <laughs> California has the population of Canada. Yeah, we're, we have slightly more than them now, only because we just cranked on immigration oh, for like true. years. Yeah. We were then lower again, than we, California for a long no time. We have no idea how many people actually live in California, though. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's, that is true. These devices <laughs> will apparently roll out to Apple stores before the end of the year. Can I, for one, say that this is awesome? It sounds cool. I love it. And look, I'm sure there's bound to be some creepy things about the mechanism. I'm a little bit worried about what someone might be able to use something like this for. I just, I, I don't know how you could use it improperly. I've been trying to rack my brain on that the whole time. I mean, there could be an attack vector where if you get one of these devices, you can force someone's phone to update to a particular version of iOS that maybe yeah. has some exploit that you can take advantage of. And because but you can turn it on... Uh, even someone who thinks their phone is like off and safe, you could, you could still, do, I don't know. Or something, but b based on that, you have to have physical know. access to the phone by which time. Do you? Pretty much. Yeah. It seems like it. Yeah. It's, it's a pad that you put it on. Oh. So presumably it's also <clears throat> transmitting wireless power. So I, I would guess that their packaging will maybe have the phone no close idea. enough to the bottom that it could get, because you don't want to run a bunch of, you don't want to run an update on a phone sight unseen having no idea how much battery power it has. Yeah. So unless you had like an NFC of chip think, or RFID chip it of some sort. Do you through? Because I feel like if you have it that close, you have, you're just asking for damage. Oh, it shouldn't <clears> be. Mm. Hard to say. I mean, you won't need much power. Yeah. And while it's way more effective in very, very close proximity, you, you can transmit wireless power over a short distance. I mean, maybe they don't need to. Maybe they could just have an RFID chip in there that says, hey, I've got X amount of battery or whatever. And as long as they can read that, then they wouldn't accidentally update something that would then get, get Dan, bricked because it loses power mid-update or something like that. Danny says there's far too many server handshakes to get an iOS update delivered uh, to your phone. It's just not going to be abusable. I... The my problem with it is the access at all, um, not necessarily the update. I I don't know. I'm not sure like how this could be used. It just it it's new, um, and therefore concern. I I haven't come up with anything in particular yet. Like I said, I'm just like worried. Yeah, um, I, and that's not a completely <clears throat> irrational thing. And honestly, the scenario that I gave is probably not realistic. I don't a, even think iOS supports being flashed back to previous versions. For example, mm. I don't know. Um, it sounds sweet though. Like I, I think it's cool. Um, I I would like to see a lot of devices get this. Potentially, pretty much everything over time. I mean. It's funny to me, not only that this doesn't exist just everywhere, but how easily rectified so many cases of devices arriving out of date could oh. be. Like you buy a computer, right? We secret shop companies sometimes. We secret shopped some PC companies very recently. We're not going to cover this until part four. So part one is shopping. Part two is arrival, evaluation of the packing materials, first impressions. Part three is... What is part three? Ah, yes, support. Part three is support. And then part four is performance and the actual kind of a micro review of every system where we look, okay, how much bloat is on it? Um, how out of date are the drivers out of the box? We update everything before we run any benchmarks because from our point of view, we're evaluating the hardware and we are certainly going to dock points for the bad experience of having to update your own software when it should have just been updated in the first place. But we're not going to, we're not going to intentionally send or, or like kneecap a 
uh, an RTX 4070 with launch drivers when a 6800 XT or whatever the equivalent would be, uh, 6800 or something like that, when a 6800 gets to run the latest drivers and we're going to say, oh, yeah, well, this is a bad computer. GeForce Experience would have prompted you for an automatic update. It would have become a better computer. So we're not going to do anything like that. Yeah. But we will dock points. And it is something that we see a lot. Devices shipping with completely out-of-date drivers. That's not even the, the most ridiculous one, though, because that's pretty explainable. That PC has been sitting in a box in a Best Buy for three months or whatever the case may be. The one that really blows my mind is when I download a piece of software off of <laughs> the developer's website. <laughs> I know where he's going with this. I launch it <clears throat> and I am immediately prompted to update it. Drives me what nuts. What the f <laughs> was the point of me downloading it? Update That's like download. when you install a game off the disk. Okay, it's 60 gigs. You, you painstakingly wait for those files to copy. You go to launch it, and it prompts you for a 60 gig f***ing update. Hey, we're gonna update what the whole game. What was the point <laughs> of anything we just did? Nothing! Yeah. Steam. Why don't I just download the latest version of Steam? Okay. Hold on. Trying to think if there's a reason. No. Hold on. No, no, there could be a reason. No. Okay, what if... Wrong. Zip it. What if... Fake news. <laughs> somebody managed to replace the Steam installer executable on steampower.com with a piece of malware. Or with, with something that is compromised. If Valve doesn't update it very frequently and just has a thing that basically serves only one purpose, and that is to be an application that runs on your computer that downloads the latest version of Steam from their servers and handshakes with them, then theoretically there could be a security benefit there. I came up with something. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's very good. Well, no, I don't. Look. <laughs> Obviously, I hate this. I think it's a horrible practice, but I'm just, I'm, try I'm trying to come up with something. <clears throat> Yeah, from Neen Old in Float Plane Chat says, okay, okay, the most secure way. You download a downloader that downloads the installer that downloads the updates and then installs them. Like, I, I don't know. People, people in chat are saying that the Steam downloads only about like two megabytes or something. And then it downloads and installs. Yeah, but there. okay, so bad example. But there are certainly things like this. Uh, hardware info is one. Love hardware info. It's a great tool. You download it from the official mirror and then are immediately prompted to update it every single time. <laughs> Why? What, what is the, what is the point of any of this? I don't, I don't understand. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, let's I see if know. anyone, yeah, it's a down. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I know what the downloader guy Either way though, I think this tech is cool. Um, I think it'd be pretty nice to just be able to use things straight out of the box. And like overall, by the way, I'm like super supportive of developers updating their software. Like, yeah, you know, issue an update whenever yep. you got, you know, new cool stuff to add or whatever. I'm not complaining about that. I just thought it'd be really cool if I went directly to your website rather than a third party and I download the latest version of your software if it was actually the latest version of your software. Uh, I think Avon Fox might have nailed the thought process. Yeah. It's risk management. If you only have a stable download as the main download and your update breaks things then only updated customers are at risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that actually sounds the most likely to me. That's fair. <clears throat> that's probably it. That lines up. I mean, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, you wouldn't have anyone who is authorized to... So you're downloading major version. You wouldn't have anyone who's authorized to push code but is not authorized to update the website. Like if there was some kind of disconnect there where the web team... Uh, you know, had a single point of, had a single bottleneck, someone who's allowed to, you know, update the files or whatever. And uh, yeah, I don't know. No, I, yeah, I think that that's probably, that's probably the most likely thing. Yeah. Oh man. Windows updates. Oh, that makes me so frustrated when you, when you check for updates and it's like, here's everything and you install it all. And then it's like, you're all up to date. And then you reboot or something or look at it sideways or sneeze or something. And then you like click it again. And it's like, here's 42 more updates. What you couldn't have given me. I don't like when it says you're all up to date and then you click check now. And then it's like, oh, I found stuff. It's like, then don't tell me I'm up to date in the first place. Yeah. Have you noticed Steam has gotten less aggressive about heating, keeping games up to date? 
Yes. I find half the time I sit down to play something, it needs an update. Like, stop. What is the point of me having auto updates I enabled? Think they're I'm trying to save bandwidth. Yeah, but I'm going to download it eventually. Uh, eventually, it queues it. Does it? Yeah. It just it'll just it'll just say pending update, and then it'll it'll update. It, it'll be like scheduled for tomorrow or something. I'm sitting here going, why? Hmm. So it might be that they're managing the load on their side, but yeah. especially with the way that they are able to share bandwidth between Steam users. Though I don't think that's been enabled over the internet yet. Not yet, right? Windows updates, I think, uh, definitely on a local network for both of them. Yeah. But I don't know if either <coughs> of them are actu actually support sharing bandwidth over the internet internet uh honestly i don't know why not i would be down if It'll it makes steam downloads games way faster for like two days from now yeah What's exactly the point of that i don't understand that's on purpose windows update only offers certain updates to those who click again uh, yeah i just wish there was more manual control over that like i wish i could say like just give me it all. You know? Yeah, and do it at this time so yeah. that when I go to use my computer, you're not bothering me about anything. Yeah. Also, don't bother me about anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do not want to change my browser preferences or whatever it is that you're trying to shove down my throat right now. I, I, yeah. I use Windows because I have to. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Next up, Twitter charging users. Windows Update apparently does support sharing bandwidth over the internet. Yeah, okay. So that mm. must be where I got that idea. But no, Steam does not yet. That feature of Steam is super cool, though. I was pulling a yeah. file at like over two gigabits from some other computer on my network. Just, yep. Why no not? need to download this from Steam yeah. servers. I'm amazed they didn't do it ages ago. Uh, Maybe it's just not that common, people having more than yeah. one gaming PC in a single house, but they, like have roommates and stuff, right? I would think it's pretty common. Roommates are more common these days. Yeah, I guess that's fair enough. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe it was just complicated. Or maybe just no one at Valve felt like working on that. I do want it to bother me before it reboots my computer without telling me. Yeah, that's not the point. Um, no, you can prompt me for a reboot. That's it, okay. It rebooting your computer is bothering you. Yes. He said that he didn't want it to bother him. Like, man, when I, when I did the switch over to Mac for what what did i do a month or something like that like way way Probably back like nine years back ago or whatever. yeah that was a month i was blown away by how seamless the operating system update process was and this is almost <clears throat> 10 years ago i would come in in the morning everything that i had been working on was tiled out exactly the way that i had left it which is to say in a completely garbage fashion because I wasn't going to spend actual money on a third-party application to enable window snapping. Ridiculous. They, they, they fucking still don't have it. How is that even possible? Okay, it doesn't matter. The point is I was blown away by how seamless the whole process was. Everything would be exactly where I left it and my operating system would be up to date. That simple. How is it that in a world where the Steam Deck exists... And the Xbox exists with the excellent save state functionality that the Xbox supports. How is it that Windows can't just put me back exactly where I left off? I, I actually don't... I'm, I'm sure there's a really good explanation for it. I'm sure it's really hard. Like getting rid of the three different control panels that you have or building a functioning search. <laughs> just, give me, just give me Windows 7 search back. It was great. I know, right? Just just give me that. Don't even update it. Oh, apparently Mac OS does have window snapping now. I, doesn't it suck, though? I know there's still a third-party application. I was, like, reading something recently where someone recommended, like, a good third-party window snapping tool. So, okay, don't, oh. don't, don't quote me on that. I don't know if this is real or just something that Nizzy is saying, but Nizzy said they enabled it because it lets Steam Deck users download games faster, which totally makes sense okay so it was, that is a situation where you would have two devices it was all about them just actually wanting to um it was all about them just actually wanting to do it then being motivated by the whole linux is the future of gaming i, I wouldn't i wouldn't thing. be surprised if a developer took a really early version of a steam deck home and was and like had to download stuff and was like "Ugh, i already have this on my computer i should be able to get it from my computer and then they just did and then it. built it in an afternoon, like yeah. a, like a crappy version of it. And then you know, six months later, yeah, huzzah! Yeah, yeah. Um, how software gets born? 